Sonia Fonikar there from Kyiv. Berlin Zoo has welcomed two new giant panda cubs. Meng Meng gave birth to the twins just 11 days after scans revealed she was pregnant. The panda cubs were conceived through artificial insemination. Meng Meng also had twins five years ago. Those cubs were returned to China. Like their parents, panda cubs belong to the Chinese state, which only lends the animals to selected countries. China recently gifted a pair to the San Diego Zoo, the first panda sent to the U.S. in more than two decades. Professor Ho Feng Hung is an American sociologist and political scientist at Johns Hopkins University. He joins me from Baltimore. Professor, thanks for coming on to the show. We know that pretty much every panda in captivity around the world is on loan from China. This has been called panda diplomacy, and it's not necessarily new. But help us understand what does China gain from this practice? Actually, in the, in the early 20th century and during the Cold War, China did um, uh, gift pandas to friendly countries. But uh, since the 1980s, then the China had a program to negotiate with different countries and different zoos to loan the panda, and then the zoos uh, need to pay a hefty sum uh, the per panda um, to, to, to the Chinese authorities uh, and research institutions to help conserve uh, the natural habitat of, of panda. So actually it is more like a rental agreement and uh, the, it has been uh, for a long time that these panda attract tourists uh, to the zoo and zoo also uh, can gain from, uh, from, from admissions of those tourists. And at the same time, China uh, definitely can spread the image of a kind of a goodwill and also uh, the, uh, signify China with a kind of a cute animal. At the same time, China also uh, received the, the financial benefits uh, of the zoos giving the uh, agreed upon uh, sum to, to China. Mm. It, can we really trace China's relations with other countries just by looking at the pandas that it's lent out or basically recalled back? In, in recent years, definitely, that uh, uh, when U.S. and China uh, relation deteriorate, for example, there's uh, uh, the pandas, uh, most well-known, uh, the ones in the National Zoo in Washington, D.C., being returned to, to China because this kind of a long agreement uh, has a certain expiration date, and then uh, right before the expiration, they usually negotiate to see whether they renew or not. Over the last 10 years, 20 years, it's usually they are renewed it automatically, really. But uh, in recent years, there's a lot of cases in which uh, there, were, there, there were low renewals. Uh, so it reflects the, the up and downs of the U.S.-China relation and China relation in, in Western country. And right now, it seems like uh, a lot of places are getting new pairs of pandas. Uh, uh, it signaled kind of a Chinese authorities' uh, willingness to... Uh, to amend the relation with those Western countries by re reviving this kind of uh, panda diplomacy. I was going to say, we've seen those two pandas go to San Diego Zoo for the first time in a couple decades now. Uh, following the election or some major political event in the U.S., could we see those pandas come back or other pandas come back? I don't believe it. they will uh, be sent back to China too soon because uh, I I'd, uh, suppose those agreements won't be short term that and I believe that those panda, for example, those who uh, were sent to San Diego Zoo will stay there uh, until the end of the agreement uh, uh, rather than abruptly being pulled out. Uh, so I don't expect them to, to go back to China very soon. All right. Professor Ho Feng Hong, thank you very much. Thank you.